As you're seated, stay right there in chapter 8. You might want to jot a few things in, but we are now in the brave new world of Noah and his sons. And as they stepped off the ark, as far as they could see in every direction was the devastation of a flooded earth. Think of that. Every hill, every valley, every mountain, all were scarred by the flood. All the trash, you know, that floats in a storm, that was strewn across the hillsides. The bloated and decomposing bodies of doomed creatures that were carried about by the water were dotting the landscape, which was just starting to green up with trees and grasses. And then there was that ominous sound that the new world had after the flood. Something that had not been heard except at the beginning of the flood, and that was a rainstorm, thunder, lightning, as the whole hydrological cycle, which didn't seem to be operative prior to the flood, had now clicked in by God's decree. And the brave new world of Noah and his sons was a world where everything about them reminded them that God had destroyed the old world that perished in the Genesis flood. Can you imagine every time it started thundering in the distance? (laughs) Ooh, is another one coming? You know, I mean, is this happening again? What it was like. Well, why did God remember Noah? Because of one thing, because of his grace. Look back at chapter 6. Many weeks ago when we were in chapter 6, in verse 8, we see why God remembered Noah and his family. It was because of his grace. Before the flood, God made a sovereign choice. He chose to love Noah. Genesis 6, verse 8, says this, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now remember, these words were written thousands of years after Noah. And yet, when, when Moses recorded God's biography of the foundation and beginning of the new world, he says Noah was a man, a recipient of God's grace. No, this first occurrence of grace in the whole Bible. Big word, first time, very important. You say, well, what does grace mean? Well, look at verse 9. Here's the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation, and he walked with God. That was written after his life was over. What did God see in Noah? He saw a just man, Perkins' generation, and a man that walked with him. That means that in a few weeks when we get to chapter 9 and we see Noah uh, in his one and only lapse recorded in the Bible, his drunkenness, his nakedness, and whatever else was going on, I was sharing as, as I was going over that this week with my family, and one of my family members said, oh, what an awful thing. I wish that wasn't in the Bible. I said, well, the good thing about it is God didn't see that. They looked at me and said, what do you mean? I said, no, no. Because of God's grace, the sacrifice of Christ, Christ's righteousness is all that God saw in Noah. He didn't see his drunkenness and his nakedness. He saw Christ's righteousness, which was yet to be lived and and yet to be offered. But yet God sees everyone in the past looking forward and in the future looking backward at that great sacrifice. So that's why God remembered him. Now back to chapter 8. That's a great thought. You can ponder that this week. Because when God puts his grace upon us, he loves us. And he sees us as his own beloved son. And so the theme of Genesis 8 is God remembers. And when God remembers his own, he remembers them in love. Now, let's let's quickly outline this chapter and make it a useful tool. And I would encourage you to, to mark your Bible. Some people say, man, I spent $60 or $80 for it, and I want it to last for good, and I shouldn't mark in it. Well, I'll tell you what. The more you mark in this thing, the more useful it becomes as a tool in your life. 